Mm. All right. Yo, what's going on, everybody? Child checking in. <laughs> Coming at you live. All. Oh, I can't talk. I got some processing that sugar right now. Boo! Hit me in the face. Charlie checking in, coming at you live this Saturday night to celebrate Grandpa's birthday. So, thank you all for joining. I'm copying some links, sharing the Twitter and Facebook. We're live. I always like to say, I always say we're like it's me and Erica, but. And I just shared, I just shared the cake, man. How you like that cake, bro? The thumbnail. I don't know if you guys have seen it yet. <coughs> Made dad a cake for his birthday. Today would have been grandpa's 71st. And uh, just baked a little cake for him in memory, man. Thought I'd go live tonight and shit and, and uh, celebrate with all you guys. Let me get this going on here. Sorry, man. I know you're all watching right now. Watching me just pretty much look at my camera. Look at my phone. Kind of like hanging out with somebody else. Anyone else in, in public, though, right? In person, you know? Y'all get together and you just kind of do, do, do. You're just fucking around on your phones. <laughs> damn these. Damn you vile things. And just toss it into the motherfucking river. So anyways, man. Let's scroll back up to the top, man. What's going on, man? 56 people watching. This beautiful Saturday night. Thank you all for joining, man. Max, hey, what's up, Max? Lucy Weber in the house. Chrissy, turning the wrench for you. Thank you so much for joining the Pepper Queen. Have you heard about the Pepper X yet? You know, I said something about the uh, the duel. It's like two chips, hot chips you have to try. Made with Pepper X. That's unofficially the hottest pepper in the world now. Not sure if I can take it. Friday, Jake, what's up? Uncle Phil in the house. What's up, Uncle Phil? And Kevin Zerfus, what's up, man? I really like that picture you shared to Dad earlier. I uh, posted on Facebook wishing Dad a happy birthday. You know, kind of a a sentimental day, I guess, as it were, you know. Um, and, uh, yeah, a day to remember a fucking legend. You know what I'm saying, Kevin? And you shared that picture is earlier you know he's wearing his titans jersey it always cracked me up to see dad wear like those football jerseys and shit like the loud uh shirts and shit you know that uh you know at first i thought that michael was kind of trying to dress dad up you know to appeal <coughs> to the younger crowd i guess as it were but nah man dad really enjoyed wearing them fucking jerseys and shit you know it's trippy and uh, yeah he, yeah kevin shared a picture of dad smiling with all his with them big old teeth. Where's he at? Let me go right here. Kind of kind of giving you guys a some of you guys a little shout out too. Shout out to my homie Junior Gutierrez. He celebrated the day with uh some Southern Comfort eggnog. Set some up for grandpa right there. And yeah, man, love Junior. He's always He's always angry, grandpa driven. So fucking inspired by grandpa, dude, that it's like, it's all inspiring to me, man. Here it is. Check it out. <laughs> Look at that right there, guys. Look, looks like dad was taking a picture of his new set of teeth, man. <laughs> Oh yeah, look at that. They even look a little they even look a little crooked, but he's happy. Look at his look at his glasses. They look a little crooked. <laughs> he's like, fuck you, Bo. My dad glasses ain't goddamn crooked. Neither are my teeth. <laughs> uh so happy and proud, you know what I'm saying? You guys made that happen for him, man. You know? You guys did that, bro, with all you know, just your, you know, uh, your interest in him, you know, and everything that dad was about, what he had to say, and you know, watching his videos and the whole advent of the internet and YouTube and shit, you know, really changed his life, man. Like I say, there was a time where dad was damn Darwin Gallaty. What is up? Lightning McQueen reviews. Benny, Miss Cotty Wapple. Hey, Miss Cotty Wapple. We got a birthday present coming your way. Oh, can I, was I allowed to say that? Maybe not. I'm always fucking shit up with my big ass mouth. God bless. <laughs> Anyways, man. Where was I at? K 
Kevin. I forget, man. I kind of went off on a different uh, a different route right there, man. Sorry about that. <laughs> Goth chick. Morbid Angel in the house. What is up, Morbid, Morbid Angel and family? I saw those Cleveland jerseys around here somewhere. You want to see something? Check it out, guys. <laughs> I'll make Grandpa a birthday cake. Check it out. <laughs> and okay, check it out. Mm, mm, okay. Erica wanted me. She she explicitly uh, uh uh you know informed me to let you all know that she had no hand in the making of this cake right here. <laughs> she said, "Baby, you tell them that that was all you." You did. Yeah. <laughs> Lightning McQueen, Bradley, what's up, man? Mm. What do y'all think? Is it the is it the gree gree? Is it the gree gree? You think? Let's see here. Let's see if we can get some candles lit here. Ah! I can take one and light them. I know dad was never the type to light candles on his cake. He was never the type to have a make a big deal about it. I remember dad, one of dad's favorite uh, birthdays when we were younger growing up. Ow. Was that we, we went as a family. Or should I say minus him? Where the hell did this part come from? I don't know. Happy birthday to you. Oh my god, look. Look at that cake. I actually so I so the icing was a little th uh, thick, so I decided to put it in the microwave for a moment. And then I had to try to let it cool. I had to let it thicken back up, so I put it in the freezer, and then I got tired of waiting, I just poured it on. So I can almost probably turn this cake like sideways. Like, look at this dude. This this cake is pretty much picture framed. <laughs> I got there. You go, buddy. Got there. Help that, Charlie. There you go. <laughs> oh my God. I tried. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So, and I know that Dad, his um, his favorite cake, guys. This cake is toast. This cake is like garbage, bro. This is garbage cake. I know that dad, God, I'm a garbage guy. I know that dad, I don't want to put it down for some reason. Dad was a big coconut, uh, was it, um, oh, I'm missing some super chats here. I apologize. Benny dropped a dollar right there. Thank you so very much. Grandpa loved them dollars, man. I remember when I first uh, moved in with grandpa. Back in like what 2016, I think it was, guys. Celebrating with some drink. I'm getting I'm getting drank tonight. Got me some chocolate drink. Screw the chocolate milk. This chocolate drink is where it's at. I'm on that drink tonight. Hadn't had any of that in a long, long time neither, but we're celebrating, man. It's it's grandpa, man. We're celebrating. Ace man, man. Much love. Thank you for that right there. I appreciate it. Mm. I got a doll. I got a doll. Make your shit and holler. I remember when I first moved in with dad, man. People were still sending, sending, um, uh, sending dad money in the in the mail and shit, you know. And uh, fucking Jacob, <laughs> fucking Jacob, guys, man was he he would find he, he he was he was seeing dad open up his mail and do mailbag mondays and shit you know with uh uh you know money and shit in it so he wised it up and he figured he checked the mail before grandpa did give him a couple of dollars man and i seen this fucker running around with a fat stack of damn you know cash and i'm like what the hell where'd you get that you know and he's a like, papa pay me yada yada he's telling everybody <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, different stories, you know. And then fucking 
we're cleaning out underneath this fucking bed. You know what I mean? Because, uh, yeah, kids, you know, went to uh, clean out under his bed, dude, and just found this fucking damn like a rat's nest for uh, uh, of uh, letters and envelopes and shit. Heroic Turkey, thank you so much for that right there. <laughs> I've been good, man. Hanging out, just doing my thing, bro. Uh, uh, working. You know, during the week and then trying to find a little something to get into with my lady and my doggy on the weekends, you know, and uh, yeah, living sober, not drinking, you know, trying to uh, uh, become becoming the man that I think that my dad would uh, would appreciate, you know, uh, um, uh, not that uh, uh, I don't know, <laughs> a crazy loser that you all remember, you know, from 2016, 2017. You know, with my purple hair and shit. And a lot of you didn't really see me that way, you know. But I look back on some of those days with myself, and I just kind of cringe, man. I'm kind of like, uh, I don't know. You kind, you kind of look back on wiser eyes. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, while I while I wouldn't change a thing, you know, with me and my dad, uh, you know, like I uh, th those last few years that I um that uh that i lived with them you know what i mean uh i wouldn't trade uh i wouldn't change anything for for those years you know except for the fact that maybe you know i was a little bit wiser with my fucking choices you know but um but yeah you know what i'm saying like since dad has passed you know what i mean i feel like i have you know been living the right the, the kind of life and and uh trying to rep my represent myself you know um, as a type of person that I think that dad would be very proud of, quite frankly, you know what I mean? And, uh, uh, <clears throat> super proud that I carry the name and that I just got my, I got my shit together. You know, how many times have y'all, you know, heard dad say that? I love, I love Charlie. Goddamn. I just, I wish he'd get his shit together sometimes, you know? And, uh, you know, yeah, it's true. A lot of you guys can relate. Like I say, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the only screw up, you know? And uh, in the family, every family has one, you know, <laughs> and we all have a soft spot for them, you know what I mean? And uh, and yeah, you know, all dad, all dad really ever wanted of me, you know, was to be fucking sober, dude. He didn't care. Like we came from shit, you know, like this whole this whole YouTube thing, <clears throat> you know, was pretty much a fluke. Not uh, quite frankly, you know, or if not a fluke, you know, just a very, you know, lucky chance, a very lucky break, you know, just the stars aligning at the right fucking time. Because, like, check it out. Like, if 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 if, uh, if grandpa were to find uh, YouTube now, like he wouldn't he would have been canceled in a week. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, he just you know, we're just living in a different, you know, time and and and. Uh, a society, you know, Dr. Hambo, thank you so very much, man. I'm that. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that, man. Jonathan Vo, question for the outsiders. Have you met? What? <laughs> no, uh, uh, no, I haven't seen him in a while. Yeah. Uh, 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 Jonathan Vo, question for the outsiders. Can you say, Hey, what's up doc? And hey, what's up doc? <laughs> Because I like Bugs Bunny. I answered that question because actually HBO Max right now, man, they have uh, um, uh, Bugs Bunny. Sorry, guys. I'm all over the place right now, man. I thought I had myself an agenda coming in here, you know. But, you know, it's kind of sad, man. It really is, man. Thinking about the old man and just him passing on and shit, you know. And uh, I don't know, man. You know, like I watch the, I, you know, I, I don't I don't really watch like videos. I don't watch Michael's videos and shit like that. You know, I'll see the titles and and then I'll sometimes I'll make accurate assumptions. Other times I'll make not so accurate, you know, <laughs> and then I'll be fed information and shit, you know. Um, But yeah, man, watching this this grandpa's last birthday video. That Michael just posted up. Heroic turkey. Thank you so much. Says Erica. Angry grandpa would have melted would, would melt this snowflake generation. Absolutely, man, bro. Like <laughs> they just couldn't take it. Uh BC rigs. Are you stoned? Yeah. Come on, bro. Like this isn't like like this isn't the time or the place, I don't think, you know, to uh 
uh, start any drama, man. I'm trying to be cool, trying to relax, you know. If anything, man, this is me just trying to stay, you know, I don't know. Just be cool because it's actually sad, man. It's a sad moment for me, quite honestly, bro. Like, you know, it's grandpa's, you know. It's a birthday, you know what I'm saying? But it's not a birthday. Like, we're not right necessarily celebrating, you know. And I was just watching this video, you know, like um, Michael ruins it once again. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't want to, I don't want, like I said, I want to, I don't want to get too critical or anything, you know. But he ruins the video once again with pretty much kind of uh getting on the camera, you know, you know, talking because you're trying to stretch out what he has, which I understand because Dad was, you know, very, you know, low on his energy. You know what I mean? Pumpkin patch. Thank you so very much for that five spot that'll definitely be put in the right place uh as next month is uh thanksgiving yay <laughs> um and yeah speaking of thanksgiving yeah you know this would be dad's last uh uh you know birthday his last thanksgiving you know and we had talked about it the other you know i you know i or i i asked the question you know not long ago you know just i wanted to just how bad dad was you know like that last, his last birthday and that last Halloween and that last Thanksgiving, you know what I mean? And, uh, I mean, like how long was hospice there before he passed away? I, was like, I, don't, I don't know, man. It, it's sad. Hooey. But let me go here. So anyways, yeah, he does a little funny I don't know, man. It just it was awesome seeing him do his. It was a really good idea. Good God. This part right here, man. This part right here, like, look. I mean, I, you know, just like. I'm glad he's feeling better. Got him some slippers. Michael's like, I'm glad you're feeling better. You know I am too. Look, look, Dad. You know I am too. You know he's not though. Look, he wants to. Birthday, wants, birthday, he wants to talk and tell you guys how I feel so bad. <laughs> Like you know, you know it's in his and it's and it's in his heart and it's in his head, dude. What you sad about? Like, you, uh, and then look, Michael's like, "What are you sad about?" Up, man, it's your birthday. Going with a trouble. You know. Like you always with a lot of trouble. Yeah, he just like you know, like. I'm gonna thank all y'all. You know, it's just like he got put on the spot right there. You know, without it. Like, did y'all guys ever get like a proper do goodbye from dad? Like, did he ever actually have like the time and opportunity to like sit back and actually write what he wanted to say and tell you, chill, tell his youngins? Did he actually have like a goodbye moment with you all? You know, because that spot right there, whenever he was sitting there playing with his shoes, dude, you know, just like. Like, there are just so much on his mind, bro, you know? You know, I understand it, dude. I, <clears throat> I don't know, man. And then, you know, just like Michael's like, you know, what are you sad about? You know, like, come on, man. You know what he's sad about, bro. Like, stop trying to, stop gaslighting him. Try, stop trying to get this out of him, you know? Or do it right, honestly, you know. Liberty and Hercules in the house, what is happening? <clears throat> Zigzag says Mike milked him to the very last moment. I mean, I'm like I said, I'm not gonna try to get too hard and shit on Mike. You know, even though like I got he had got him to finally block me on Twitter. <laughs> Cause I pretty much called him out, you know, for you know, all the angry grandpa communities. Angry Grandpa's community fucking hates Michael, quite frankly. And, you know, this is just another way for Michael to fucking boost. Like I said, I can't help it. <laughs> I can't fucking help it. You know, this is just another way for Michael to try to, you know, win, win the damn, try and win him over, you know, with some half-baked bullshit, you know. You know, a very, a very exclusive video, might I, might I add, you know, like a very, a very controlled image 
a very controlled view, you know, of grandpa. You know, once again, like he's got the he's got a picture of grandpa with all of us around our arms around him and shit. And once again, like pointedly cuts me out, you know, pointedly put, you know, puts them all in pictures and shit. And, you know, it makes me wonder why, why did he cut me out of that shit? Because of the whole negative narrative that, that, that he created all that bullshit that he had spun on the side right there, even though he used grandpa's clout, grandpa's power, grandpa's youngins, you know, for his war in which he attacked me with, you know? Oh, man. Oh, bro. And then, like I said, dad had to live with that shit. Had Dad had to sit through that shit. Like, I wonder how dad really felt. You know? Michael's got this whole fucking side narrative of Charlie raped his sisters. Both of my sisters are damn on YouTube, on the internet. Accusing me of SA. You know what I mean? Doug. <laughs> you know, freaking damn. They they dug drug dug dug through the mud. God called him a rapist. An R. Whatever. All over what like stupid YouTube drama shit you know that it's ultimately in the end it's just come back to blowing up in michael's face you know i mean like for one you know 75 percent of the internet knows that you're full of shit that all of them are full of shit you know for two you know he's destroyed every fucking you know half of the fucking the uh uh, uh the uh characters in, in the in the and the angry grandpa family, half of the characters are either fucking destroyed or marginalized. You know, Jennifer is just one snip away from, you know, being the prostitute again that Isaac claimed she was just, what, three years ago? Kai and Kendra says, too bad you couldn't take a lie detector. You know what? The lie detector test doesn't uh, prove shit in court. That's what I told him. Kim, co file charges. Bring it all up in court. Let's do this shit fucking legally. And who remembers? Kimberly was on Twitter said, I suppose after we after I exposed Jennifer for the fucking child abuse that was going on. Well, now Kimberly's going to Kimberly's going to uh, call, file charges for, for the rape. Finally, after all these years, after Charlie exposed the child abuse. Well, now Kimberly's gonna go file charges. Yeah, Ollie says lie detectors don't work. Bro, like, shit. You know, you know how nervous and shit I'm going to be? <laughs> oh, my God. Like, and how angry. Like, you know how you know how emotional, like, this shit, that shit that they fucking put out on me has me? You know, like, it's emotional battery, honestly. And I honestly believe that that's why Michael hasn't uh that's why michael uh privatized those videos he either privatized those videos or he deleted those videos because he knows that it is damaging viable that i could take the fucking court and maybe i should maybe there's still some type of shit. i don't know it probably wouldn't be directly linked to him even though the videos are out there where michael's like huh he raped you right he did he did this right he, he gave you this right just like how he did to johnny he did to jacob but everybody ate that shit up. How many of y'all have changed y'all's mind about the whole Jacob shit? Raise your hand if you actually believed. But of course, like I said, you know, it was my fault. Jacob did get the alcohol from me after my, my drunk ass passed out. And then he's like, ooh, cool. But, you know, how many of y'all actually believe that I just voluntarily gave Jacob drugs and alcohol while we were, while we were at a family function? You know, but then changed in your mind after you saw Johnny be fakely uh, staged and coached. Mike McQueen said it made him change his mind. One. And that's fine. If it changed one mind, then, it, then that was worth Michael 
doing that shit to himself, being exposed. Michael doing that video, which that video has uh, ceased to exist uh, on Isaac's channel anymore. Where Isaac went, Isaac went with that, and that was quote unquote just the tip of the iceberg of how much they had against me. And what they were doing, guys, is they were throwing that blatantly staged shit against the wall, you know, hoping that it would stick, hoping that the graphic content, just the nature. Of the video itself, you know, Johnny, a young age. No way is Michael going to manipulate a young child into uh, uh, accusing his own uncle, his own flesh and blood of such steep allegation, you know. And yet you did got you guys didn't believe it. You know, they were hoping that you guys did believe that. And then they were just going to pile on everything else that they wanted. Just like they did the first time. <laughs> Gabriello the pug says, let's be real. Ain't no one wasting liquor on Jacob. I mean, think about it. Like, honestly, we were having a family function. Kimberly was right there. Had her kids and shit there. Like, we like, honestly, I was hiding. I was in seclusion. Like I said, whenever all the family gets together, there's got to be one of us that has to be on the outs, you know, and. And it was me, <laughs> you know, it was me, me and dad already had a little tension going anyway. You know, I don't, you know, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure how supportive dad was of my kind of my YouTube channel, quite frankly, you know, um, I don't know. He gave me a few shout outs and shit, you know, <laughs> but you know, he was. I don't know. Remember, I had to get my own P.O. box, yada, yada. Dad was tired of me getting mail in his box, yada, yada. I understood, you know. But, and, you know, and then maybe it did. I did cut back on my chores a little bit. But my fucking chores, man. I was 30 fucking six years old. You know, fucking chores and shit, man. It was, uh, it was getting to be much, man. I'd already been there, what, a year and a half. Me and him already had a little tension. Anyways, blah, 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 blah. Troubled waters with family, you know, is, you know, like I said, just another Eminem in the trail mix, man. It's, <laughs> it's just one of those things that happens. Jim Tom says YouTube is considered entertainment purposes only. You know, I mean, yeah, that's what it's considered. You know, just like the news is considered entertainment purposes only, you know. But that's the thing. Like, so many people get their news, you know, from the Internet now, you know. And, uh, yeah, is what it is, you know, and I, and I love the fact that people like Michael, Michael's side and on Isaac's side and shit. Now they'll, they'll try and twist it now. Oh, it's only for internet. It's only for, uh, uh, fun purposes, yada, yada. It was this, it was that it wasn't what you were trying to say. It wasn't a, a negative. I love it because we all know that it was nothing but negative. You know, <laughs> Liberty Hercules wants to go live. Nah, man, I don't. I don't really feel like taking any calls and stuff tonight, man. I'm just kind of sitting here talking and chilling. Kind of turned into a vent reason, a little a vent session, a little bit. Hoffman, what was that? Hoffman, Maine, on the reel. Who would film their brother's confrontation with their phone in pocket? He did, yeah. I know he had it in his he had it in his pocket, kind of sitting in his pocket like like that, like so, in his pocket like that. Oh God, stain. And then he had his and then he had his fucking arms up like this. <laughs> I remember it. Like I said, I was drunk, but I wasn't that drunk, you know, so. I mean, hell, you know, he, he, you know, not only did he fucking film it, but he also put it on the internet for you all. <clears throat> not only did he film it, but he also put it on the internet and spun it. He held on to it. He, he, he got what he wanted and he held on to that shit. For like fucking six months. Like he tried to say that was the reason that I got, that I left and I got quote unquote kicked out. You know? Hey. 
and yeah, you know, Michael, he just, you know, yeah. He fucking destroyed, you know, just so many people along, you know, along the way, man. And de- especially right there towards the end. That's when it really happened. Like, I, you know, Michael saw the end coming. Guys, you know, I firmly believe this, man. Like, Michael, we all saw that the end was coming. Like, Dad knew the end was coming. Like, like, like I said, he was sitting there whole, uh, fingering them damn uh, 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 fingering. I got to stutter when I say finger. He was fingering his uh, fucking house slippers. Brand new house slippers, you know, just knowing that, like, this is it. This is like his last birthday. You know, what am I going to do? What am I going to say? What can I, what can I do? How can I reach out to these youngins and let them know exactly what's on my heart and mind right now? You know? And Michael is just so wrapped up and let's get this video done. Let me just get this video done so I can upload it tonight. Like he, 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 he fucking took no fucking preparation, no thought whatsoever into grandpa's last birthday. Bought him a pair of fucking slippers. You're watching this man fucking slowly deteriorate. The, the, this legend that created you, that gave you everything in life. Everything that you take for fucking granted right now, Michael. Came from this man that you're watching slowly deteriorate. You know he's going to die. You know this is his last fucking birthday. You get him a fucking damn pair of slippers. You do the old, you do the old basic ass fucking Thanksgiving meal shit. Now I'm not gonna sit there and say that it's not a nice gesture because, quite frankly, it is. But damn it, man, you know you could have did so much better. Could have done so much better. And what about me? What about me? I could have done so much better, and I would have done so much better had I been given the chance. I promise you that. Had I been given admission to go say goodbye to my dad in the hospital, to come spend the last couple of months by his side. But no, Michael had to sit there and continue spinning his bullshit instead of just stopping it and saying, before everything got all crazy out of fucking hand, Michael could have said, okay, you know what? Boom, this is done. This is over with. Grandpa is passing away before our eyes. We need to come together as a family, which is what dad would have really wanted. That's what dad wanted more than fucking anything. To have all of his children there by his side as he passes on into this next world. Whatever that may be, if there is. I'm in a strange state in my life right now. I still pray to God every, almost every night, man, with the doubt in my head, bro. It's just like, man, I don't want to die, you know? And that's what, like, dad says, like, I'm not ready yet. We're on his deathbed. I'm not ready yet. He wanted all his children there. He could have had all his youngins. He could have had all of y'all there. But Michael couldn't have me there. Why? Because Michael's spinning up some more bullshit. Michael's got his fucking do boy, Isaac. Going live, uh, doing rap songs, talking about how I raped my daughter. You remember that rap song, Isaac? Is it still on your fucking, on your channel? Who remembers that? Where the fucking damn Michael had Isaac do a video or do a music, a rap song. Yeah, we know what you did to your daughter, Charlie. Why ain't you with her, y'all? Blah, 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 blah. Had a whole fucking... All of Grandpa's fans thinking not only that I rape my fucking, both my sisters, but also my own kid. Instead of saying, hey, let's quit, let's stop. Charlie, I know you were fucked up. I went to damn rehab for it. Who remembers I went to damn rehab to get right. And then I came back out right into this own fucking, to the same bullshit. Michael said, it's going to be okay, Charlie. Just, Just say you hit Bridget. Just say you did, even though we know you didn't. Fucking man to man. Even though we know you didn't, just say you did. So that we can move past this shit. So that's one less thing that I got to explain. And so I went ahead uh, trusting. I said, okay, fine. I did. And then up, turned it. And then he fucking blocked me on all social media. Fucking sent Isaac after me. Oh my God, bro. And dad is sitting right there passing away. Dad would die in December. I would get out of a uh, rehab, uh, what, middle of August?
Dad would die in December. So between August and December, and it was right after I got out. So right around September, almost October, right around the time y'all saw Dad all frail having his birthday, giving being given his slippers. Where was I at? I was in Florida. I could have I was could have been one of the nights I was sleeping on the fucking side of the interstate in fucking Gainesville, Georgia. <laughs> Just so that they can continue their narrative. Like honestly, man, like and then I sit there and I watch what, you know, what what effort they actually put into dad's last birthday. And I'm like, son of a bitch, man. You know, Michael asked him, why are you sad? What the hell do you mean, why is he sad? He knows he's dying, bro. He feels it. You couldn't give him a couple of days to come up with some kind of speech, you know, for his kids, for his youngins. Couldn't have gave him five minutes. You sitting there, I'll give you a moment. Just think something possible. Okay, go. Couldn't give him five fucking minutes to sit back and talk and let and let him actually tell you what's on his mind. Dad went to bed that night with all that shit that he could have fucking expressed and told you all, all his youngins. He went to bed with that shit on his mind. He died with that shit on his on his mind and on his heart. Locked. Don't be sorry for me, Kai baby. I feel sorry for y'all. The way the way Mike did dad. There was so much, like there was so much that was just not captured. So much wisdom. Like dad did not have a proper send-off. Dad was being cared for by a hospice. These guys are supposed to be millionaires. How many millionaires do you know? I don't know. Yeah. Fucking died in his own bed. He, You know, like millionaires, some millionaires do have hospice, but you know what? They have the best state-of-the-art equipment in which to, uh, to be comfortable on. Dad died in his own fucking bed, you know what I'm saying? They had to sit there and try to help pick him up every single fucking time he had to be rolled over or whatnot. Instead of a bed that could just lift his ass up and fucking wipe it for him. Desi uh, Montoni says, say it, Charlie. The truth will set you free. I mean, damn it, bro. Like, damn it. Ain't nobody else speaking it. Everyone else has been silenced into submission. TJ, what's up, homie? You know, I'm the only one with the ability to stand up and say, fuck you, Michael. You know, like, and everything was going fine. Erica told me, said, Charlie, don't, don't, don't go too hard on Michael tonight. See, that's how wonderful of a person Erica is. Like, she kind of had the insight. She knew. <laughs> she watched me watch that video. She heard what I had to say. And she knew. Told me not to go too hard on Michael, you know. Made me forget what the fuck I was just about to say, too. <laughs> I don't know. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. John, John, uh, John Doske, uh, Doeskis, yeah. Well, your sisters are probably scared. Yeah, Michael has, uh, Michael has everybody, you know, intimidated, controlled through fear and, fi and finances. He's, they're all living in mom, even though mom did stand up for me. Mom did stand up for me and she stood up for those boys. And what happened? Mike took her fucking phone away. Do y'all remember that lot, that blog? I think that live stream might still be up. I think that one might still be up. Hold on. I 
I think he fucking deleted it. <laughs> like another one, man. Another like all these live streams, all that shit is straight fucking gone, dude. And like, but it doesn't have to be gone because we've all lived it. We all already know, you know, what the hell happened, what went down. We've all already expressed our our opinions and beliefs. And like I say, um, mom tried to stand up for me, man. Like y'all saw everything was going fine, dude. I damn uh JC had moved in with me. You know, I was trying to help him get into Job Corps, try to get get the boy back on the right path, you know, fresh out of jail. You know, I took him on vacation, man. You know, I got to spend vacation with mom, everything. Everything seemed to be going fine. Everything was going perfectly, you know, and then boom, next thing you know, fucking Michael's got Johnny on video saying that I gave him drugs, that I gave him pills. And he's got fucking JC going through my fucking drawers, rifling through all my personal shit while I'm at work. Going behind my back and giving Michael sensitive information, you know, that'll, that'll try to fuck me up financially, try to cost me my job. All while I was trying to help them. You know, next thing I know, JC's on a fucking bus. Stole my shit and said that I threatened to kill him. With how much other shit? Like, man, good God. You know? And what did I do? All I did, all I did was follow up on Johnny's claims that Jennifer's fucking boyfriend was beating him. And then having a nose for manipulation, you know, fucking playing the Mike Tyson knockout with Michael's fucking manipulation games for the last fucking four years. I've got quite a keen nose for you know, fuckers playing games, <laughs> you know, either that or I'm just fucking paranoid at everybody now. Tommy R says, I will never forget when you lived in that tent and they still kept harassing you. Living in a fucking tent. Who raised your hand if you, re you remember Isaac straight up said that he'll never quit until I'm hanging from a rope. He literally said that he will not stop until I kill myself. Who remembers that? Raise your hand. And I swear I was about there, bro. Let me tell you, man. I was literally on. The, and you know Michael would have loved that. You know Michael would have loved had I offed myself. Then he could have did a video for that too. Oh, he'd be doing videos about me right now. I'd be he'd I'd be his favorite Halloween topic every fucking year. Let me reach out with my brother, Charlie, the spirit from the other side. He would have had a goodbye, Charlie. We had our differences, but you know, that was YouTube. It was people don't know that we were really just planning pl uh, creating that drama. Meanwhile, yeah, he, he they were they were waiting for me to just kill myself for you know, they could really cash out. He made enough money as it was off my misery, you know, as it stands. How much money do you think Michael made off of that shit, bro? Because everybody was all into that shit, man. I was public enemy number fucking one, bro. I was like, where's Waldo? It was like, where's Charlie? Motherfuckers were pausing videos and checking license tags and fucking VPNs and shit. Oh, my God. Everywhere I go, I was getting found out. William Gabriel says, Charlie and the chocolate juice. Truth be told. <laughs> says, JC has disabilities and you bullied him and forced him into Job Corps. You were a lousy mentor uncle. You trolled your way into infamy forever. Well, I I kindly disagree with you there. Uh, I believe that uh, Job Corps is not necessarily for the overachiever, okay? It's not like I was trying to push JC into something that he had no fucking chance or opportunity at whatsoever. I mean, come on. We're talking about Charlie Green here. This is Charlie Chale that graduated from Job Corps himself. 
and JC doesn't have learning disabilities, stop that shit. JC was in regular classes. JC went to regular school, regular class. Stop it. And if anybody bullied and manipulated JC, it was Michael who reached out, reached through, reached beyond that opportunity that, that I was giving JC and took it. JC was more than happy and willing to try and go out there and earn it on his own like a man. But no, Michael. Now, just find out more about your Uncle Charlie. Let me know. And don't you know, yeah, they found out exactly where I work. That one dude, thank you so very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> that kind of got to me. Ace man, I appreciate that. Charlie tried to make JC a better person. <clears throat> yeah, because I disagree. I don't feel like there was any bully in there to JC whatsoever. Except right there towards the end, whenever I found out that he damn that he did give me up. And I told him to get the fuck out. He had so he had somewhere to go. And that if he wasn't my nephew, that I'd kick his motherfucking ass. Almost 100% quote. You can quote me on that. You know? And I don't really care, quite frankly, you know? Because at that point, family... I, I was about to say, family don't do that to each other. But apparently, my family does do that. It seems like I can't catch a fucking break with these people. Every time I try to reach out and I try to help, man, I just get, I get smacked with the all hand, almighty hand of God. A.K.A. Michael Green. Michael Schaffenberg says, Mike is a good man. Does a good man force his nephews into uh, uh, faking videos saying that their nephew, or that their uncles gave them drugs? Does a good man... Uh, uh, have his manipulate his sisters into saying that their brothers rape them. I guess that's a good man. I mean, I'd rather be bad, bad to the fucking bone. Send me to hell if that's what good is. Brandy Renee says, forgive JC Charlie. Mike is the bad guy in this situation, bribing him with money. JC lost himself. You know, you might be right. I was thinking about JC earlier today. You know, I was like, like, I felt like he needed to learn a lesson. You know what I mean? I felt like he needed to learn that he just can't just fucking just treat me like shit and fucking, you know, uh, 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 put my livelihood at risk. You know what I mean? Just for a couple of dollars. You know what I mean? I felt like he needed to to learn a little something, you know. But I mean, overall, you're right. You know, and how long am I gonna make him learn a lesson? And also, you know what I mean? What if something were to happen to JC right now? Like this is that this is that missed opportunity that I'm feeling right now. Like that, you know, that that grandpa, you know, you know, that was a watch that video tonight was a huge missed opportunity. For Grandpa to really let you guys know how he was feeling in that moment, where he was at, and what you all mean to him. You know, big, big mistake. You know, big missed opportunity. And, you know, what if something were to happen to JC right now while I'm trying to teach him a lesson? You know what I'm saying? When it seems like right now, you know, like even after, you know, he, he put me through that shit, you know, he still, you know, reaches out to me. Once again, him and the family are on the outs. Once again, they just used him for YouTube. And for and, and Michael just used him for his own his own evil doings, his own evil deeds. And just sent him off again. Now JC's somewhere by himself, man, with fucking money probably all washed up. And he's reaching out to me, you know. So I mean, I have uh, you know, I have you know, I have been feeling it. 
Because, I mean, you know, I do have a heart, bro. Like, honestly. And that's why, despite all the bullshit that fucking Michael put me through and shit, you know, I still every now and again would reach out to his ass. You know, like, I don't know, man. I just got a heart. Some of us just, some of us just have a heart, man. You know? <sighs> TNT Life, what's up? Says, we were with you on your past journeys. We were TNT unethical advice and reviews. Now we are TNT Kitchen and TNT Life. You gotta go check out TNT Kitchen and TNT Life. Do I want another little piece of this cake? I'm not so sure. So... Yeah, you know, like I say, you know, it's overall, you know, just this is a night to remember dad, quite frankly, you know, <laughs> like I said, I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to go there, you know, but I mean, like there, because there is a long way, you know, I thought that this would just be kind of a night for dad, but when i watched that video earlier man i just couldn't help it man i just like i said there was just so much that he just said he wanted to say you know what i mean that you know he wasn't given the opportunity and i like to think that you know michael dropped the ball on that here be rabbit says i think when you grow up in dysfunction and poverty to where siblings have to sell each other down the river to not get screamed at or neglected then there is resentment towards each other as adults ah pretty good <laughs> you know I, yeah kind of i kind of see a, a, a lot of truth in that it's very simple it's base it's core yeah we be therapists huh uncle phil man thank you so much man says get on that fitness grind bro it'll help a lot i need to like the weather is finally starting to change it's getting cooler here man there's a really nice cold breeze blowing um and uh yeah i'm gonna i want to start doing some jogging and shit man and uh fucking holy shit <laughs> yeah i've been i just want to i want to i need to get right dude i'm like though i'm in like the worst shape of my life right now bro you know and you know i've been kind of talking about it here like for the last few months like once the weather gets right i'm gonna start exercising and stuff and um you know here we are i haven't uh i have not you know not yet anyway so um tj swan says how's doug i don't know man i i think doug was your last live stream right somebody just said something that got me kind of interested right now let me look here i don't believe it Huh, I don't know, man. Let me look here. I don't know, his posts seem kind of spotty. Has Doug been going live here? Or was Doug normally going live every uh every night? Three weeks, one month, one month, one month. Yeah, man, I don't know. I haven't heard nothing about Doug, man. Hopefully, he's doing all right, man. Much love and blessings to Doug. Uh, my friend Kim Carpenter, man, and uh, uh, her uh, partner, uh, 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 Eileen. They, uh, Eileen's dad actually is in the hospital right now with COVID. You know, so all y'all throw Doug, Eileen some love. There's Doug right there. I am sick. Can't talk. So he's been watching. There's Dougie. Dougie the man in the house right there, man. Y'all trying to find out about Dougie. I understand that, Dougie, man. Respect, man. Go get you some rest, man. Hopefully, you ain't got the Rona. And, uh, yeah, man. Fucking everybody's dying right now, man. We don't need, we don't need a, an OG dying. You know? And that's the thing, bro. Like, at any time, bro. Like, it's just over, man. That's it. And, you know, like, I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here kind of struggling with the with, with the thought of it right now at 38. 
I'm about to be 39 here. Another month and a half, probably. I'm over half of. I'm over. I'm over half of the uh, halfway there. You know, if Dad was 67, 38. I'll be 76. 76 is half. You know, if I die at 76, I'm half. I'm at half my age right now. At 39, I have to be 78. 78. <laughs> you know, so. You know, I. You know, I'm. I'm all about. You know. You know, seizing the moment, you know, and doing the right thing and and, and working hard and staying sober and, uh, and trying to stay positive. Damn it. Trying to stay positive, you know, and uh, enjoy that way. I can enjoy each damn day. Quite frankly, I need to start learning to enjoy it even more. You know, like we get so wrapped up in what we're going to do. 20 minutes from now, what we're going to do tomorrow, you know, the next, the next, or I, let me, let me say, I get so wrapped up in the next, you know what I mean? <clears throat> that sometimes I can just forget, you know what I'm saying? That I am here in the now, you know, instead of what we got, what we need to do, you know, to make life better, you know what I'm saying? Or, or, or for life to be this, you know, understand that your life is what it is right now. And just be in it. And I try to understand the now. Try to take your mind off of ten minutes from now, man. It's 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 a really it's a really freeing thing for me. What'd you say there, Ace Man? I wish I can see that retract. Let me see what you said. <laughs> I can't. I can't find it. <laughs> uh, yeah. We love you too, Dougie, man. We hope nothing but the best for you, man. And uh, <clears throat> like I say, it's a shame that you got thrown under the bus the way that I did, man. You know, like, you know, it's crazy to watch to watch how it happened to you, you know, with your daughter throwing you, you know, throwing you under the bus. It, was, <clears throat> it wasn't like me, you know, like I got my brothers and sisters, you know what I mean? Like, this is your actual child. You know, that fucking betrayed you, you know. And uh, for what? Quite frankly, for fucking what? You know, like, man, you know. And what if what if, what if Dougie were to pass tomorrow? Dougie's all sick right now, Bridget. You know, what if Dougie were to pass tomorrow? Then, then Bridget's going to be like, oh, I did love him. It was my father. And then Michael and them are going to do a Remembering Doug video. And shit, and they're gonna once again be right there to fucking capitalize on it. While they laugh behind his back. While they laugh at him while he's dead. I'll never forget the time that we fucking did the video at my grandma's gravesite. Who remembers the video that dad collapsed on her grave and mama, mama. <laughs> You know, and his dad walked away for a moment to get his bearings or whatever, you know, Michael would look, I swear, to, dude, on my daughter, on, on my father, on my grandma, every fucking thing that I love, hold dearly, bro. <clears throat> dad walked away and me and him were standing at the gravesite and Michael looked back over at dad and then dad wasn't looking and Michael says, I told you I'd dance on your motherfucking grave. I told you I'd dance on your grave. On everything I love, on that motherfucking urn up there. Michael danced on a Grandma McGreen's grave. And bro, I laughed. I ain't gonna lie, bro. It was like half of it, literally half of it was like a uh, like a shock. Oh my god, what the fuck kind of laugh, you know? The other kind the other side was maybe somewhat kind of like, oh well, I can see it. Like my me and my grandma, we had kind of a uh a very troubled uh, a relationship. But as you see, I wasn't dancing on her fucking grave. No, not at all, man. I actually fucking took out a... Uh, we, we actually, me and Erica, took her a concrete angel not long ago. We 
we actually took Grandma a concrete angel the uh, uh, not long ago and some uh, gravel and stuff and got her, her gravesite all looking good again. I don't know if y'all remember that video. It was on my last channel. Which I'm going to go ahead and open up a new channel here soon. Getting close to that time, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and probably start a new channel. I'll, I'll share out the link uh, for all y'all to subscribe. And then um, we'll just continue this. So Queen Frog says uh, AGP loved his mom. Like he, <laughs> It was more than a love. Like I say, man, they were like best friends, bro. Like I said, dad would go over to grandma's house and stay there all day. I'd go over to see what's up, swing by and uh, give a quick hey, grab a quick angel biscuit or something. And they'd just be sitting there at the table smoking cigarettes and having coffee. Sometimes talking, sometimes just quiet as shit. Just sitting there thinking, just lost in thought. And, you know, and that's a really nice relationship, you know, like. <clears throat> that when you can actually just sit with somebody and just be quiet. Like you don't got to just sit there and constantly shoot the shit. Got to constantly fill that dead air, that uneasy air, you know, with idle chitter chatter, you know, like they can actually, you can actually just sit back. And they always had a fucking cigarette in their hand. Both of them, whenever, whenever you got both of them around, man. Oh, man. It was like twin stacks in Winston Salem, bro. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I burn central, man. And then they just sit there and chill. Dad did the same shit with Doug. Like I say, man, there was times, man, I would I would come out. I wouldn't think that anybody was even in the house, man. I'm glad I didn't. I went walking out, playing with myself or naked or some shit, you know. <laughs> but there was times that I would come out the room, man, and there'd be I wouldn't think anybody was there, but Doug and Dad, Dad and Doug. Or I would hear him. I wouldn't think anybody. I'm thinking I'm by myself playing the game or some shit. And then I hear Dad and Doug in the living room talk. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, just, I don't know. It's nice. What's up, Miss Buckeye? Thank you for joining. We're just talking about Dad a little bit. I'm not going to be too much longer on here. Right at an hour. I wasn't going to try to plan on being here too long. I wanted to show y'all my cake. And I wanted to just say yeah, happy birthday to dad. And I want to say thank you to all of you all, you know. Without you, without you guys, you know, there would be none of this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I remember, you know, I remember back in 2009, 2010, you know, right before they were, you know, before they were doing the videos, you know, and dad was just always stuck in the back bedroom. The little single wide trailer right there in Trailwood. Furiously rocking that chair back and forth. I can't do it with this chair because it's gonna break me. But he'd rock me rocking that chair so hard, man, that you know, every few, you know, every 10, 15 minutes, he'd have to get up and slide his chair back forward because he didn't pushed it back so much with all his weight and everything and his furious rocking. You know, the internet and you guys, y'all brought a lot of joy to his life, man. Y'all really changed all of our lives and. <clears throat> in a dramatic way, man, like me, y'all gave me like a, y'all give me like just so much, you know, like sense of self-worth and shit, you know what I'm saying? Quite frankly, guys, like whenever, whenever we're in, whenever I'm not online and shit, you know what I'm saying? And I'm out somewhere in the world by myself or whatever, you know, and I can, I can, I can feel awkward or I can feel, uh, <laughs> I can feel uneasy or something, you know, there's times I got anxiety, dude. Or I don't feel so good about myself, you know, growing up poor, you know, you tend to, you tend, you tend to kind of lose a sense of self value because you don't, you don't have the cool shoes like the other kids have, you know, and you're not rocking with, in, in the set, you know, with the, with the new kids and you're not, you know, you just don't feel as good about yourself. And you, sometimes you tend to grow up with that shit, you know what I'm saying? And this times we're all getting a feeling like that, you know, but I'll look down at my phone or something. I'll go to my Facebook or Twitter or something, or I'll just think about Wolfpack or, you know, you know, something will bring me to like, hey, man, there's a shit ton of people out there that fucking care about you, bro. That, you know, that, that you know, that know that you're alive, you know, and want you to to do well, bro. And, you know, that means a lot. It quite, it really does, man. You know, people, 
sometimes you think like the like like the the uh the 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 well the good intentions you know the well intentions are always you know you know uh how do they say the path to hell is paved on good intentions or i don't know mm -hmm. <sighs> like i say you know one i don't know i don't know anybody can tell you good luck and hey you're doing a good job or uh, uh keep up the good work you know or or stay strong you know and if you don't really value or care about that person you know what i'm saying those words aren't going to mean anything you know what i mean and you know i care i care about you guys i love you guys you know i care about what y'all think and shit that's where sometimes i don't so i don't like to say what's on my mind like when i brought up the whole dog the bounty hunter shit <laughs> and i got my ear got my head chewed off for it and i was like shit i don't want that i don't want my community against me and shit you know and and uh and when i'm doing good and i'm here and you guys are telling me that i'm doing good and shit like that you know like it makes me feel good bro and again it helps me you know stay the course you know i know a lot of you guys have been watching for so fucking long man so many of you guys man you know watched me get that dog back in what 2014 before i was ever like two years before i moved into grandpa's house I get messages from y'all asking me how pumpkin's doing. And I'm like, pumpkin? Pumpkin? What was, was pumpkin? They like, yeah, they, you had a pit bull named pumpkin. And I'm like, um, oh, shit, that pumpkin that I named Daisy, that I had named pumpkin. I had a pit bull that I had named pumpkin for like a couple of days. Like, Michael's like, where are you going to name it? And I was like, I don't know pumpkin, <laughs> you know? And then, like, two years later, people are asking me how Pumpkin's doing. And I'm like, fuck. You know, like, y'all are remembering this shit from, you know, <laughs> from years ago. You know, we go way back, you know, and it means a lot, you know, quite frankly. And, uh. Yeah, that's why I mean it's kind of, it's kind of bittersweet here, you know what I mean? Where like it seems like it seems like the whole fucking grandpa base is like divided, you know? Like Michael did that video tonight and put it on the angry. Check this fucking shit out, guys. Michael did Michael did that. John Hagee, thank you so much, brother. Says we will not would go negotiate with online terrorists. Fuck them. That slob mob is about fucking gone, man. What do you think? So check this shit out. So anyways, Michael. Puts a, uh, he, he puts something out on Twitter and on his own community on uh, YouTube. Uh, uh, if you would like to uh, 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 give Grandpa a birthday shout out, send me a message here on Twitter and on uh, uh, the Kid Behind a Camera community. Didn't put it on the AGP community, which every single fucking one of them hate, Michael. Guys, you got to see this shit. Michael thought... Michael thought that bringing uh, Lauren back for the videos would uh, uh, entice people. And, dude, the comments is just fucking eviscerating Michael. Oh, my fucking God. Destroying him. Okay. And then uh, and then he comes out with, uh, with, the, with the video, Grandpa's Last Birthday, which, let's face it, you know, was shit that we've already seen before. Nothing new. Just Michael trying to gain sympathy over fucking, you know, video that, uh, you know, that we've already seen. While adding uh, uh, shout outs. Let me show you now. He didn't put anything on Grandpa's YouTube channel community. But he did put it on here on his kid behind a camera making a video. And he also put it on uh, his Twitter which we know uh, his Twitter is pretty much if you're not if you are any sort of a Charlie Green fan of mine if you if you argue with Michael in any sort of way whatsoever you will be blocked like strictly pretty much strictly kid behind a camera fans only on Michael's Twitter if you look at his Twitter he's getting like a couple hundred likes per tweet like it's really bad he's pretty much blocked out every fucking body that um you know that you know the support you know that that doesn't support his word solely he fucking blocks you raise your hand if you've been blocked so 
Um, so he does this video. He posts it on the Angry Grandpa channel without necessarily giving grandpa fans, you know, true grandpa fans, you know, the opportunity to uh, to reach out and to say, hey, happy birthday. We love you, grandpa, yada, yada, you know. Which I just find kind of shitty, quite frankly, you know. And uh, and I just don't see how that's at, uh, gonna gonna end in any short uh, in any way uh, gonna win fans over for uh, for Michael, you know. Quite frankly, dude, like like I say, it was a video that we have already seen before. Uh, and on top of that, uh, you know, uh, I guess I hadn't seen it, you know. Um, because just watching dad did that last moment, you know, just struggle with his words and his emotions. And, and like I say, I can understand, bro. Like he's, he's, he's standing at death's door. You know what I'm saying? He's like, he's like literally, you know, knocking on uh, heaven's door, bro. And, uh, he, you know, he's, you know, conflicted. He doesn't know what to say or do about it. And that's where Michael should have recognized that and took that moment, you know, You know, but then again, maybe I'm being too harsh, me and being a little too critical because hindsight's 50 50, right? We all do and we all do and say things, you know what I'm saying, that we look back sometimes even moments later, even while we're doing them, sometimes we're like, fuck, why did I do that? Why did I say that? Why didn't I notice that? Why didn't I react? Why didn't I say this? You know, so many what ifs, bro. So many what ifs that pain me, you know, and that I wasn't able to be a part of. Quite frankly, you know. Like while Michael was damn, while dad was dying and Michael was blocking me out. I was thinking about it at work the other day. When I were whenever I was in Orlando, Florida. And uh I went to I was able I was actually able to go to fucking uh, uh Universal uh, uh, Fright Nights or whatever in Orlando studio, man. Like I've always wanted to fucking go. Like it was a dream come true for me, you know. Uh, even though my dad was laid up in the hospital, you know. Like I wanted to go see my dad. I like I I wanted to, to be there for him and to say the things that I, you know, that I've always wanted to say to him, you know, or at least what was truly deeply in my heart, you know. I wanted to. You know, but I was not allowed. Like Michael had me blacklisted from, you know, from, from the uh, the hospital. Michael, being a, a, a power of attorney, blacklist Charlie. But then he turned around. And he told all of you that he wasn't stopping me. Matter of fact, he said that he would pretty much condemn me or whatever if I didn't come say goodbye. Who remembers that shit? You know. So here I am at Universal Studios Horror Night. You know, like. Fucking dream come true. But every time I go, every time I sign on to Facebook or Twitter, you know, there they are. I see Michael talking about, oh, Charlie's out here having the time of his life while his dad's lying dying in a hospital bed. Like, you know, and you know that you're, and you're blocking me from saying goodbye. It was so fucking sad, dude. And then he says he's not stopping me, and yet him, he calls his bodyguard, his cleanup guy, Isaac, all the way from Pennsylvania to drive 12 hours. Once Charlie finally gets to goddamn Charleston to say goodbye to his father, Michael pays his cleanup guy to drive 12 fucking hours straight to be a bodyguard to make sure Charlie didn't get into the hospital. Because I was at my point, I'm like, fuck this. Even if they're, I was about to go John Q on a motherfucker. I swear to God. I was about to run up in there and be like, where the motherfucker? Where my goddamn dad? Like, motherfuckers, Michael was literally drove me insane. Had all of you guys turned on me so fucking bad. And that's like what's what some of the, that's like the worst damn near, you know? Like, like I say, when, whenever we're not together, you know what I'm saying? You guys, you guys empower me though, man. You know, like, you guys are a real, a real, source of strength for me, you know what I mean, and damn, that was taken away from me, like, overnight, and it was really hard to accept and deal with, you know, and just, like, man, I, man, I, just how good Michael was at it, 
and how how like, just how how much how quickly and how easily people were buying into everything that they were saying, you know, everything. And I would I mean I lost it, man. Like literally, my dad's fucking dying. Like they're all playing damn YouTube games, playing stupid ass fucking YouTube storylines while my dad's dying. Barack Obama says, think about how much I, Michael paid Isaac. How much do you think Michael paid Isaac to take me out, to take down Charlie? I'm sure it was on a monthly basis. I'm sure it wasn't salary. And then they want to know why. Oh, why does Charlie keep talking about me? Huh? Why is Charlie? Why is Charlie? Wonder why. Years. That y'all have fucking stolen from me precious moments of my life that are gone forever. Robbed. And I'm just supposed to just forget about it? Now that y'all lost, see, it's like so fucking crazy. Like, like motherfuckers start losing the war and they want to quit. Oh, I quit and not ain't no fucking quitting in war. Jesus Lamelli says a, a thousand a month. Sounds kind of on the low end. Hmm. Queen Frog says AGP was dying and Lauren was taking his pills. When the Lauren got her regiment. Lauren, Lauren was on pills long before her and dad got together. Okay. That was, that was, a uh, that was something that dad had to, uh, take care of in order to have Lauren. Lauren wouldn't have came down here, wouldn't have moved in with dad if he hadn't had that taken care of, which dad did, uh, by how, by, with the fact that he had Tina in his life. You know, as long as he had Tina the angry neighbor around him, you know, there was constant drugs and, you know, and a way to get them. Plus people like Lauren, you know what I mean? They don't necessarily need dad or need an elderly, an older person to get their, uh, uh, their drugs. They, they can work the system where they used to be able to work the system really well. You know, um, uh, times have changed and, uh, yeah. So I can imagine Lauren has gone back to the black market or she's done found her another old person to uh, to mooch off of. Because, like, let's face it, she had she was married when she got with dad. She was she didn't get divorced until I moved up in there. Like the divorce wasn't final until like I was living there or some shit. But. um, Oh, shit, what was I going to say? Oh. <laughs> that, that bombshell just kind of blew my own damn mind. Yeah, Lauren was still married for a long time. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, the man that she was married to before dad or while she was still with dad, he was like 50 something years old too. So Jesus Lamelli says, Yeah, Lauren was married. Fuck yeah, Lauren was married. She like said she was still married while she was living with dad. Angry Junior. You look more like your dad than Michael. How do I love? Yeah. I'm good. Thank you. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha says Dan. You just read this says damn the info is dropping. Uh, yeah, well, that's what it is. You know, like I said, Lauren never did no Lauren never did anything. Like I couldn't tell you what. Dad loved her. Dad appreciated Lauren uh strictly for her beauty, whatever the fuck that is, you know um for whatever that's worth you know if, if you like if you like dewey from malcolm in the middle you know with brown hair then you might hook up with lauren not me um <laughs> but dad nonetheless dad thought she looked really nice uh and she made him happy you know well to a certain degree you know what i mean so like in that note, in that respect, you know what I'm saying? I can, you know, be thankful for Lauren being in dad's life. Let me tell you what, like there was times where dad, you know, would come home. Uh, uh, um, he didn't poop himself. You know, he, 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 he pushed it a little too far. 
you know, and uh, Lauren would come out there and clean up after him. You know, it was one thing I didn't do. Plus, dad didn't want me to do it. You know what I'm saying? He's embarrassed. Yeah. So. Oh, man. Yeah, it's, you know, I don't know, bro. It's sad. It's just, it's, it's, it's sad where the whole family is at this point. You know what I'm saying? Because, like I say, dad, the greatest gift the dad would have been the family coming together and uniting and staying strong, you know, especially in his time of passing, you know, dad, there was nothing, dad would have had nothing, no greater, you know, uh, 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 happiness in, in his heart, you know, as he passed on, than to know that his family was together there, uh, 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 to, for one another and for him to carry on after he passed, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, since dad passed, so much has changed, you know, like so much filth and lies and shit, even before dad, but after dad has passed, you know, and, and, and his, his name and his image has been used for like so much clickbait and so much drama has been used for so much like personal gain, like with Isaac, like the fucker here right now, he's posting damn happy birthday, grandpa, yada, yada, yada. My my father would fucking despise you, Isaac. The man that you are. Welfare case. You know, you know, just stop it, bro. Like, dad, you know, so many, so many evil, vile, vile fucks are, you know, using such a kind man, a fucking legend, you know, for their own twisted fucking nefarious gains, dude. It, it, like, it drives me crazy. And Michael was doing it on a daily fucking basis, man. How long has Michael sat back and just fucking clickbaited <coughs> and fucking tarnished dad's name and reputation to the point where damn nobody wants to fucking watch a damn thing that, you know, nobody believes the damn thing Michael says. You know what I mean? He hasn't had a video break 200,000 views in a month. You know, he's having he's having to bring back people that he's fucking pushed out. And I would hope to see damn. Because, like, let's face it, he pushed Lauren on out after dad was gone. Like there were there, I guess not. There was really no reason for Lauren to be around there. I guess there was no reason for Michael to continue to uh, uh, take care of Lauren, which is basically what they were doing. You know, there's really no need to continue to financially uh, 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 um, take care of her, you know, so they sent her packing back home to her mom, you know. Um, um, yeah, you know, so like, um, I don't know, like he didn't really exactly use her, you know what I mean, and, and abuse Lauren, you know, uh, it was there was a mutual thing there. I believe there was a mutual understanding to that. That she, I'm sure the rundown was she the rundown was given to her before she even fucking stepped on a plane, train, or automobile to move in with dad. I'm sure Michael, whoop, here's what it is, bitch. <laughs> you know, set the ground rules from day one, you know. So uh she knew what was she knew what was, you know, what was up, you know. And uh, it's just crazy, like, you know, like, my, you know, Michael, like I said, Michael knew the end was coming, and he just cut ties. He cut so many people off, bro, and it was sad. It really was, man, like, because here he is now, man, just scrambling with what he's got, you know, and, and what he has is not much, man, and we, everyone's mad at him, you know, like, like I said, he's clickbaited and fucking uh, uh, toyed with dad's name and image. And y'all's emotions for so fucking long now that y'all are like, fuck you. Like, like I say, man, you you go you go to Angry Grandpa's community page, man, and they're all like, you know, fuck you, Michael, you know? Like uh this picture with dad for happy birthday. Like this is the this is the most like positive shit that's been on grandpa's channel in a long time like grandpa's michael hasn't posted anything new to angry grandpa's community except for uh 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 community posts for michael's videos on his own channel 
you know, which draws the ire of true angry grandpa fans that hate Michael, you know, so they uh, respond neg negatively, you know, and anybody who pops up on grandpa's channel upon finding grandpa, yes, there are new young kids that are still finding grandpa, like YouTube is a huge thing, you know what I mean, and grandpa is a big fan, you know. Our grandpa is a big draw still, four and a half million subscribers. Somebody told me the other day, as uh, I'm friends with a teacher on Facebook who said that they saw a little kid uh, while, uh, standing in the lunch line in, in the cafeteria with an angry grandpa shirt on and said that he walked up to the kid and he was like, hey, kid, I like your shirt, man. Cool shirt. And said the kid got all got all jazzed up about it, made the little kid's day. You know, but like, yeah, these kids are, the youngins are still coming around every day, you know, and don't you know, they watch these videos and like, well, how come nothing has been, you know, uploaded in so long, you know, and they, they're, they're still going through the back catalogs, but don't you know, Michael, that they're checking out those new community posts that you're putting out there. They're experiencing that bad taste that you're putting in all of grandpa's fans and the mouth of all of angry grain, that bad taste that you're putting in the mouths of all of angry grandpa's youngins. You know, with your self-serving post, come to come to come to Kid Behind the Camera's channel to watch uh, 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 the Haunted Ring. You know, it's Halloween time, and now Michael's got a fucking spooky storyline going once again. Go fucking figure! And all the Grandpa's fans are like, "Fuck you! We don't want to watch your dumb shit. Give us Grandpa shit." And this young kid that just met or just found Grandpa and is going through all the back catalogs and is reading all the new community shit, they're like, "Damn." Grandpa's awesome. Who is this kid behind a camera that everybody hates? You know? <laughs> Queen, Fro Queen Frog says, I heard Isaac trolled McJuggernuggets for a while because Michael was jealous of him. I wouldn't put it past. Like I said, McJuggernuggets actually puts... Like thought and shit to his videos, you know, and I can't say that because I don't really put too much thought to my videos neither. But you know, I try, I try to bring y'all like the rawest form of my of myself and my adventures when I go out as I possibly can, you know. Like that's why I don't really put music, I don't put pictures and shit like that, you know. Like you know, I'm I'm on the spot everywhere I go. Y'all are right there with me, and it's fresh and it's raw, you know. And uh, it may not be as polished, you know, and as well spoken as some of the more choreographed vlogs, you know, but, you know, that's one thing that, that, ha, you know, YouTube is not lacking, which is choreographed video, you know, like we're just tired. I'm sure people are just, everyone's just tired of all the same, you know, just made up fake bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Where I try to keep it real and fresh for you guys. Junkyard dog says, uh, I wonder how long Mike's channel will survive. We're like wondering that too. Like Eric, me and Erica was talking on the way home from work yesterday. And we we're talking about, you know, just how fucking, just how far Isaac has sunk. Just how far his star has fallen in just like the last couple of months here. You know what I mean? Like where Erica's like, just imagine where he's going to be in two years. You know, just imagine. Same thing with Michael, you know. I don't know, like with Michael, like if you go back and you look at some some of his uh uh his cat, dude, look, Lauren warned us. Lauren's back in the video one day ago, one hundred and forty three thousand. Like that was something that was just never unheard. Of. Like Michael, you know that was that's something to be embarrassed of, you know, for Michael. Michael would downright be embarrassed that people would talk about this kind of shit. Whenever you see 193, look, three weeks ago, still 196. That's an angry grandpa in the, in the comments. 196. But then it goes up, you know, 220, three, uh, 314, 265. Okay, no, yeah, 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 okay. And he was, you know, ba uh, ba settling out at over 300,000 just a year ago. Look, 311, 301, 361, 277. 277 was on the low side, man.
That was just a year ago. Now, man, it's like half. Here it is, man. Bridget. And no, uh, uh, yeah, they're all he's getting 150 and shit. He's like a, at half that he was at a year ago. Just give it another year. With where Michael's reputation is in the, you know, in the eyes of all the true angry grandpa fans. And his damn his his affiliations with such a uh, 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 evil, well known online bullies like Isaac Guest, who is finally being called out for all of his shit. Lance the Sergeant says Mike's not like Phase Rug, right, man? Like you know, like you know, you know. Couple million subscri uh, subscribers on YouTube ain't shit no more. You know how much? Uh, look at these Lance Stewart's and fucking Logan Pauls and shit. Fifties and sixty fucking hundred million subscribers. You know, on top of the fact that Michael has just been so idle these last few years since dad has passed that's where i'd like to say where i have been living a life that i'd like to feel would be a, uh, an honor to dad's name and memory michael has done the complete opposite he's done nothing but lied and can uh, uh, manipulated and clickbaited and taken advantage of all y'all's uh emotions and gullibilities to the point where y'all are like fuck you michael to the point Michael's so butthurt about it that, damn, I made fun of him about it the other day and he blocked me. He hadn't blocked me on anything I'd fucking joked about and talked shit about since I got my new Twitter. And he knew it was my shit, too. But he just, he was like, oh, and Isaac was like, Michael doesn't need to block him right now. Michael wasn't blocking me because he was going down my friends list and blocking everybody that was following me. And commenting to me. But then I went ahead and said that Angry Grandpa's com uh, community, YouTube community hates Michael. And he blocked me. Woo! He's like, he couldn't say, no. -uh! Gabriello says Mike needs to leave his house for once. He would feel better. I mean, like, literally has done nothing. No sort of improvement whatsoever since dad passed away. And people don't want to see that shit. You know what I'm saying? Nobody nobody wants to see somebody fucking squander and piss away the opportunities that the viewer themselves would die, would give a left nut for. Quite frankly, I mean, yeah, how, how, many, how many of you would damn give up a left nut to be in Michael's position, to have the opportunities that Michael has? Not in the position that he himself is in, but a like, a like kind, a kind, a kind, same kind of path, same kind of money and opportunities, you know, viewers, admiration, lineage, lineage. Michael was left with lineage that he is let slipping through his fingers, and that's worth more than the fucking money. Michael let Michael letting angry grandpa's fucking lineage slip through his fat pudgy fingers because he doesn't know how to fucking hold it, how to take care of it, how to nurture it. That's the fucking saddest sight of all. <sighs> and people that people don't want to see it, man. They don't want to see somebody just sit there and piss all that away. Life-changing opportunities, not just for Michael, but for the whole family. And look what he's done with it, you know? Hmm. Well, I didn't. Th I didn't think this this was gonna be any kind of rant session tonight, or uh, uh, any kind of vent session, or anything. I apologize that it kind of 
went that way. I, I, I don't feel like I crossed any lines, you know, but I do feel a little bad that, uh, that, uh, you know, that this is dad's legacy now, you know, it's a bunch of bull crap. You know, I try, I'm a, you know, I don't know. I would say I, I try, but I don't, you know, like I, I still indulge in, in my emotions, I guess, as it were, you know, Daniel Garcia, man, throwing in a bunch of pigs. <laughs> <laughs> He's stupid. <sighs> Bama Mama says, anybody heard about Pastor Aiken? What happened to that podcast? Bama Mama says, uh, he heard it sucks so bad that they stopped doing it. Uh, apparently they still stream on Wednesdays and, uh, Sundays, uh, but it's a church thing. They don't do the Isaac thing, you know, um, apparent, you know, I, something's gotta be fucking up. Like they're watching Isaac. They're watching his channels, like the DSS and fucking the state and shit. You know, Isaac has done brag to the police and other motherfuckers and shit that with his YouTube channel, yada, yada, yada. You know, I'm sure that he's not allowed to 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 live stream. Otherwise, I don't know. He would. You know, he wouldn't just be letting his fucking star fall the way that it has. You know, without trying to fight for it. Like that's another creepy thing. Like <clears throat> after all this time, after all this stink and all this fuss, you know what I mean? That Isaac kicked up. You know what I mean? He's actually gonna go out. He's gonna go down weekly this way he's he's actually gonna go down without a fight the way that he has gone down dude like it is embarrassing dude like you know like it really is man like i'm surprised after all like after how hard it was for me after how hard my life and existence was you know now for everything just to be so easy you know and calm And in my favor, you know, it's whew, it's kind of a it's kind of life altering, man. So the ballistics is happy birthday to the legend, AGP Washington for eight years. Yeah, all you guys, man, thank you all for watching, Grandpa. You know, making him feel so special. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, man, whenever I'm out there alone in the world, you know, and I'm feeling discouraged or I'm feeling unsure about myself and I think about all of you and 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 it gives me that strength, it gives me that confidence, you know. Can you just imagine how dad felt with four million of you at his back? I must have felt like a third cock. I mean, he walked around with a strut, bro. Like, he was somebody, man. Like, he was the fucking legend, dude. He was the motherfucking angry grandpa. You know? He rode around in his fucking 55, and people recognized him. People fucking paid tribute. People brought him fucking gifts. You all gave him gifts. Like I said, I man, like, man, <laughs> I would love watching dad go into the UPS store. And come back out with fucking just handfuls of, of stuff. And he's like, Charlie, you got to come back in and help me, bro. And he loved the looks that people gave him, man. Hey, how, how it had made him feel important, you know. And you all did that. And he cherished it every day, bro. And I really wish that, I really wish that he would have been able to tell you guys exactly. I wondered, you know, did he? Did Grandpa have his final moments? Let me take a look here. Did Grandpa have his final words with his youngins? Look at that confronting Doug in person. Really, Michael? 3,000 down votes on that motherfucker. They all believed in it, though.
Angry Grandpa's Final Pumpkin. Hold on. I'm looking real quick. So much bullshit. Grandma says goodbye. Saying goodbye to my father. So it doesn't even look as like as if grandpa actually got to have a sit down with you all. And I really, you know, that that is a that is a regret that Michael's gonna have to live with. You know, that he robbed you all of. Because couldn't you imagine? How many times would you watch that video of grandpa giving you one final word of advice and what you mean to him? And the strength and the courage and the light that you all gave, gave to him. Man. I'm lucky to have all the, these videos here of dad. I've got a video of dad. What It's for Susan, but dad talks about me. You all knew to, and you got little cartoon characters on your goddamn Facebook. Uh-huh. Well, Bo, I want you to know I'm saying this on video because I ain't never talking to you again. Who? I got no more respect for you. Who's he talking about? Anything. Oh, he's talking about CJ. Problems you have with the person. It's still family. Mm -hmm. Hear that. I don't care how bad things are. I don't care what problems you have with the person. It's still family. I've got a son, Charles. I thought about changing he my Facebook back to Charles. Five, six years. Didn't talk before those years. But you know, I got to thinking, you know, I says, my problem with Charlie isn't what he does. Hmm. It's not with how he runs his life. Cause, yeah, don't get me wrong, this boy, he gets up in the mornings, he goes to work. He does his job. He pays his child support. I was just he drinking. Home, has him a couple of beers, watches a little TV, gets on the gets on the Facebook. Talk shit. Charlie's not a bad boy. I just get drunk and talk shit on Facebook. Charlie was, he didn't meet my expectations. Oh yeah. But you know something? He don't have to. Oh. He don't have to meet my expectations or what I want him to do with his life. He's a grown man. He has to do what he thinks is best to do with his own life. And I got this. This is for me. You know? I have a relationship with my son. We talk now. We talk on the phone. We're Facebooking. <laughs> we try. Yeah. Do that. I love all five of my kids. He said five. And I love all nine of my grandchildren. It would kill me knowing that I was in the hospital sick and on my deathbed and my son wouldn't come see me because he was ashamed, he was embarrassed, or he was mad with me about stuff. You hear that? Because he was ashamed. You hear that, Michael? It would kill me knowing that I was in the hospital sick and on my deathbed and my son wouldn't come see me because he was ashamed, he was embarrassed, or he was mad with me about stuff. Don't you know that's exactly what happened, guys? Dad was laying up in the in the hospital de uh, on his deathbed, sick and dying, and I wasn't allowed to come see him. Michael had everyone thinking that had dad thinking that I hated him, that I was mad at dad. Didn't Jennifer tell you all that dad was afraid, a quote unquote, afraid that I was underneath the bed going to hurt him? If that's the case, you heard it from grandpa's mouth right fucking here, Michael. Whatever it may be, he said it would kill him to be on his deathbed and I wouldn't, I wouldn't come see him 
because I was mad at him or there was some other kind of fucking drama going on. If that'll be the case, then he's not my son. And I tried all I could. And see that? And see, so Michael went ahead and did everything he could to help Grandpa think that I wasn't going to come up there and see him. So that Grandpa could possibly fucking hate me. And y'all saw me do everything I could to get to get down there to say goodbye. The closest that I would get to saying goodbye or to saying goodbye to my dad would be, damn, the hotel parking lot where me and Isaac got the quote-unquote fight. Isaac, the quote-unquote bodyguards to, to stop me from saying goodbye to my father. Yeah, D Beat says that's tough. I mean, how tough is that, bro? Much love back, bro. I mean, how fucking tough is that, bro? And I lived through it. You're looking at a man that lived through that kind of shit. And I came out a stronger man. I weathered the fucking storm, and I'm stronger now than I ever been. I'm here to tell you a fucking story, bro. I've got a story to tell, man. One hell of a fucking story. <sighs> so... Like what's what's for what's for us in the future? Who knows, man. But like I say, I'm a man that has been wronged highly, you know. And I don't know, like me and Michael can squash it, and move on, and shit. You know what I mean? But like, I'm gonna need an apology. I'm gonna need some damn rights wronged. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna need some wrongs right. Write it, I should say. But like I say, the only reason that I believe that Michael would try to do it and try to get back right with me is pretty much just for YouTube video, you know. And like I say, if he starts doing video with me, I want to get paid for it. You know, I know what he wants and I want some of it too then. <laughs> Motherfucker. So. <sighs> yeah. How about that for a birthday, Dad? I'm sorry. Like I say, I know the what Dad wanted more than anything was for, you know, that family togetherness, you know, and, you know, it's just not happening, bro. <laughs> like I say, I'm not going to sit there and just play the game. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to stoop to the depths, you know, that others have stooped, you know, et cetera, you know. Like I said, I'm going to continue doing the right thing, living well, and um, yeah, man, you know, uh, uh, living the kind of life that I know my dad would be proud of, you know what I mean? And that maybe, you know, one day I can bring a little Charles Marvin Green forth into the world, you know, and teach him the things that my father taught me. So... Brianne Anderson says that's messed up. You can't trust Mike. I mean, you know, he, he sent JC to the house to fucking spy on me like four months ago. <laughs> like four months ago, he sent JC to the house to spy on me. And he got fucking Johnny to do a fake video saying I gave him drugs and alcohol, like pills and shit. Like I have a reason to not trust Mike. Those are some messed up reasons. So, anyways, man, I guess I'm going to go ahead and get off of here. Go spend some time with my lady. My gift from dad, like I say, dad's last gift to me was Erica, that beautiful woman in the other room. And, um, you know, I need to, uh, you know, enjoy more time with her. I find myself out here playing games or watching 
you know, trying to watch Halloween shit, yada, yada, whatever, Simpsons, et cetera, and a third, you know, and I could be hanging out with my lady, you know, my gift, my, you know, my everything, bro. Just like, you know, and not waste that time, you know, that opportunity, you know, those years that, uh, um, that I'll miss, you know, on my deathbed, you know, either I'll miss or I'll look back with fondness, you know. So, whew. anyways, man, thank y'all all for watching, bro. Reese Stewart, uh, Nerdy Do, It's Marvel Monday, Lance Sargent, uh, D Beats. Damn, thank you so very much. Woo, I appreciate that, man. Fit the dollars in the bank. We'll definitely spend that on some turkey. I'm not sure what we're doing for Thanksgiving. We might be spending it here. Buy me a turkey with that. Says AGP would be proud of the man you become. As a viewer, I'm glad to see such a vast improvement in your own personal life. And happy birthday, angry grandpa. You hear that, dad? <laughs> they love you. And uh, yeah, you know, like, um, like I say, man, like the main thing that dad wanted for me was to not drink. You know what I mean? And I can, <laughs> I mean, I can, you know, I hate myself for it, bro. Like. If I had just quit drinking just two years ago, you know, where I'd be at today. If I quit drinking four years ago, you know, where would I be at? It would have maybe been been different circumstances, you know. I possibly could have said goodbye to my dad. That I wouldn't that I wouldn't have gotten uh fucked up and highly emotional and pissed off. You know, dad's fucking power of attorney. Somebody that actually had control over dad. And damn, couldn't, yeah, controlled everybody around him, man. It was just sad fucking shit. And it's going to take a lot to get over, man. It really is, bro. But uh, with the, with the, with the stopping of the drinking, you know, it, <coughs> it really, it has really helped me, you know, uh, uh, face a lot of my demons, you know, a lot of issues that I had been running from, you know, that led me to drinking, you know, I've been able to, to, to face down and overcome and conquer, you know, and, um, and life's looking so fucking wonderful, bro. Like the sky's the damn limit for us, man. You know, it really is, man. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm kind of sad, you know, that I'm that I'm such a late fucking bloomer. You know, why did I not do this 10 fucking years ago? You know, 20 years ago when I was 18, why didn't I just join the fucking military for 20 years? And I'd be I'd be damn retired right now or some shit, you know, but don't try to flex it. Don't try to don't try to focus too much on the past or the future, man. And just try and instill yourself and uh, absorb, you know, everything in the now. You know what I mean? Be thankful and happy for everything that you have and enjoy it to its fullest because once it's gone, it's gone. You know? Once grandpa's gone, he's gone. You know? It's sad to think that one of Michael's biggest regrets is that he didn't get more video of grandpa. When I say towards the end, you know, he'd come over and he'd, he wouldn't even stay for Sunday dinner, man. He'd get he'd get clips of it. Oh, it looks good. Get a taste of it and then leave. You know, when he shared that when he did that video a couple years back of him and Bridget's anniversary, and he shared the 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 uh, the audio the audio message from Grandpa. Who remembers that? <clears throat> Michael shared an audio message from Grandpa to prove that Grandpa loved Bridget. You know, and end the damn and end the uh, uh, the voice message. Dad says, uh, dad says, well, I guess I missed you, Bo. Thought y'all might come over and see me, but it's okay, I guess. Bro, that broke my motherfucking heart. Then he would go on to say how much he loved Michael and how much he loved Bridget and how much he misses him. I thought y'all were going to come over and see me, but it's okay, I guess. Go back and listen to the motherfucking, you know, God, bro. I just, you know. I thought that I, I, earlier, man, I had all these stories that I was going to share, you know, uh, uh, birthday stories and Halloween stories and shit, you know. And then I saw the video that Michael put on the Angry Grandpa's channel, you know, of, you know, that, you know, dad's last birthday, that fucking repeated garbage, you know, and dad's 
struggle, you know, with trying to find the right words and, and, and what to say and not knowing what to say and not having the proper opportunity to say it. You know, it's tragedy, and it and it put me in a different state, man. It did kind of put me in a somber mood. So I apologize to any of you guys. You know what I mean? That kind of made you feel bad. You know, if I did, you know, if we if you were expecting a more upbeat live stream tonight, because I sure was. I was expecting to, you know, be a little happier. I wasn't expecting uh, to talk too much drama and shit. You know. Um, but unfortunately that's what it is with my family, you know, and I laugh. I, I actually find it, a, I actually find it a little piece of victory, you know, whenever, uh, Michael and Isaac's followers are like, why does Charlie keep talking? Why is Charlie mad? You know, after, uh, um, after all that has been said and done, you know what I mean? Um, now that I'm finally gaining some traction, you know what I'm saying? That silence, bro, it is just like, it's victory, man. I don't know. Maybe it's not like it's it's hard. It's hard to it's hard to feel good about any of this when there's so much that's been lost and so much that has been damaged. You know what I'm saying? So much good that has been ruined. You know, it's really hard to feel feel happy about any any sort of win in this situation. You know what I'm saying? Where the real losers, you know, are all of you. Actually, it's all of us, man. You know, we all lose here. Not just not just y'all, not just us as a family. All of us, man. We all lose on this. So whatever. You know, like I say, yeah, um, I have I have created myself a new life, you know, here in Shelby with Erica, you know, with my career going on here. And I I feel so happy and blessed and thankful and honored, you know. And it's just and it's something everybody has, but for me to be able to say I've got a career going. Somewhere that, you know, I don't feel like I can get fired at tomorrow, you know, that I've got health benefits and 401k and I feel like a, a productive member of the team and shit like that, you know, like these are basic things that everybody should have and feel, you know, that once again, you know, here I am later in life feeling, you know, and it's still just a wonderful feeling to have, <laughs> you know what I mean? To know that, you know, the YouTube channel can be gone tomorrow and that I won't be scrambling for what the fuck I'm going to do next. What am I going to do outside of social media? You know, I won't have to worry about that because I've already established my own self outside of social media. You know. And uh, and I was stuck in that loop for a long time. We get stuck in that loop of, of social media, just owning Facebook, a Facebook and a Twitter. We get caught up in posts and and, and, and other people's dramas and. And et cetera, you know, you know, just imagine having fucking trying to actually actually survive off of the Internet, you know. It's. It can be a good living, but it can also be stressful and it can also damn. Ruin not only your life, but others around you, you know. That's why I say, you know, uh, uh. I'm happy and thankful that man, if any, all the cell towers were gone tomorrow and shit, and we all had to go about our own ways and shit, you know what I mean? That I've got myself a skill in which I can rely on, you know, to continue living my life. Much love to you, Sarah, and to Sarah. Ah, thank you for joining in on us. 230 people came and joined tonight, man. Thank you all so much, man. You guys are wonderful. Ooh, is my camera about to go out? Oh, I need to get me a new a new webcam. Once again, thank you, uh, D Beats. That was a very generous donation right there. Um, and, uh, yeah, thank you so much for, for loving and your grandpa. And, um, <coughs> you know, for... Uh, having an interest, you know, or at least uh, following my, you know, my journey as well, you know. AGB would be proud of the man you become as a viewer. I'm glad to see such a vast improvement in your own personal life. And like I said, that's what Grandpa wanted from wanted the most from me, you know. He wanted me to quit drinking, and he wanted me to damn 
just live a normal life, you know. And I mean, you know, I, I may not be living an exciting life anymore. I don't have, you know, a thousand people watching me while I'm going crazy and, you know, and I'm being fucking chased around from fucking city to city, state to state. And, you know, people people aren't waking up every morning like, hey, what the hell did Charlie do? Or, you know, I'm not waking up every morning to like tons of fucking naked pictures and shit. You know, damn people trying to, you know, just give me stuff to be close to me and shit like that, you know. Um, and, and, you know, it's just a quiet, normal life, you know, with a little bit of flair on the side. I got, I got my wolf pack, you know, and, and, you know, that's enough, you know, it's a quiet life and, uh, and, uh, you know, I'm enjoying it, you know, it's enough for me, bro. I've kind of, I've kind of fell out of that loop of, you know, chasing for views you know what i mean if i come live and i'm talking shit about isaac or michael you know it's because it's coming from a place in my heart you know what i mean i'm not sitting here making up bullshit storylines i'm not clickbaiting you for views like michael does you know that's when you know, you know they're doing it blatantly for views when michael says oh i need brain surgery or i'm having stomach surgery or Lauren's back when really she's just on a phone call or, you know, all that shit that Michael, all, all, all that heightened, those heightened emotional titles that Michael popped out, you know, in order just to get you guys to watch, you know, that was a man, you know, solely uh, interested in views, plain and simple, not interested in the product of his craft, not interested in uh, uh, the happiness of his community. It's only interested in, uh, that view, which equals the dollar, you know, and that's what clickbaiting is all about. You know, so. I'm happy I don't have to try to string you all along uh, by the nose emotionally uh, in order to earn my own check. Serendipitous Sarah, thank you so very much. Happy birthday, AGP. Take care, Charlie. Thank you so very much. I appreciate that. And, um. Yeah, like I said, thanks. Thanks once again, you know what I mean? For, you know, loving grandpa and loving the family and following our journey, you know, like it's, that's so crazy. Who would imagine, man? Like I said, growing up, man, you know, I always felt like we were the only fucking fucked up family on the whole block. You know what I mean? Like I, I felt so alone, guys. Like it's so crazy. Like <laughs> growing up as a little kid, I ever, did I ever tell you guys about my anxiety and my depression where it almost, I, I, I'd say that it's raining. You know, like you, you, anyone ever get like such bad anxiety and depression that you can literally almost feel like you can almost feel it dripping on your skin like rain. <laughs> and I would have these feelings as a fucking kid, bro. In second grade, I'd be feeling the rain, the rain and the pain, dude. My family fucking sucks and there's nobody out there like us. Nobody in this fucking world that can understand me. Or my point of view of where I'm coming from. And nobody ever will. You know. And then here you guys are. Here I am 25, 30 years later. You know, damn connecting with you all. Opening up my heart and soul. And actually feeling a connection between us. You know, through that pain. And that suffrage, you know, that that uh, that that I overcame. And that means so much more to me than a fucking view, than a dollar. I appreciate the donations. They do mean a lot. I'll, and they go a long way. But, I mean, we are making decent money, too. Like, you know, I don't necessarily do this for the, the donations. Like I said, man, me and Erica, were almost making double what we made at our last jobs. We're fixing to get another raise. Oh, my God. Like, guys, I swear to God, we got to work. Uh, uh, sometime last week um and i heard her i heard a rumor going around that we were all getting a raise at work you know and i'm like that'd be nice you know like okay that'd be nice right where'd you hear this from where uh, uh can you verify your source yada yada and then um and the next thing you know the bosses they all called us in they're like uh yeah it's true I'm like oh shit so we don't know yet we're gonna have a little bit plus we're about to have our freaking car Erica's Kia is about to be completely paid off. So we're about to have two cars paid off. I just got to fix the fucking Jeep. 
And I'm almost a year away from uh, finishing up on my damn child support. So, I mean, like, things are really, really uh, shaping up to turn around uh, for us in a really good way. And, um, you know, I'm really super excited to where we're going to be in the next couple of years. Well, that's scary. Like I said, I don't want to just blink my eyes and then be 41. You know, I really want to enjoy every day, you know, but stay mindful that, you know, the fun that I have today and the positive uh, changes that I make in my life today is going to benefit me, you know, in the long run, you know. <laughs> so, D Beats, thank you for that drop, brother. Says, you work hard, you play hard. Hard work always pays off in the end. I got to do some kind of, uh, some kind of something fun here soon, man. Like we haven't gone, we haven't gone to anywhere like creepy, crazy, abandoned, you know, I kind of don't want to go anywhere creepy, crazy, abandoned anymore, kind of, because I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, uh, get caught trespassing. I like my job and my, and my life a little too much right now. I don't want to lose any of that by, by, uh, getting busted trespassing, but, um, but yeah, man, we haven't gone out and done anything cool, man. I'm trying to think of something cool, somewhere awesome to go, something maybe creepy or something. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, like I feel like I've been working hard, I hadn't been playing too hard, you know. But um, but I have been living well, been eating, eating well, living well, and uh, drama free, and that's about the most that we can ask for, right? So it's Marvel Monday. Have a great one, man. Bald young Nick Merck <laughs> says, I thought you were unemployed. Hell no, man. Fucking I'm making good money. <laughs> I'm making decent money, man. And it's just about to get even better. Erica, she's a fucking damn boss. She's fucking damn taking classes to advance her management positions and stuff like she's just man. Just looking really good for us you know i don't want to i don't like i don't want to brag i don't want to seem smug or anything you know um <clears throat> because it's not lost on me like i said i remember just the just a little over a year ago i wasn't making but ten dollars an hour with no benefits or no 401k or jack been working temporary for two and a half years without getting hard on and no hopes of it you know and uh here i am today man sometimes you guys sometimes you just got to get up and walk away man you got to have the guts to get up and walk away from a a, a situation that you are that uh, that you are not thriving in you know that is not created for you even if you feel like it's it's a comfortable rut you know <clears throat> i i had to get out of it and here i am today so much better so big al thank you so much have a great night man chrissy Lightning McQueen reviews, Angry Junior, Mama Behind a Phone, Daniel Osborne, Franco Avila, Adam Ritter, Rebecca Spratling. My eyes feel like they're kind of doing some tricks on me. I almost feel like my eyes are jumping a little bit. I've been up since freaking six o'clock this morning. I uh, damn took like a 30 minute nap and then I got woke up by the neighbors. So I'm tired tonight, man. I'm going to have to go to bed early tonight. <laughs> and it's Saturday, too, man. I hate this crap, bro. Like, Saturdays, I'm in bed by 10 o'clock. You know, it really feels like I waste I waste my evenings, man. I don't know. I got up last night, man, at like, at like 1 o'clock. I was like, actually, it was like 12 30, 1 o'clock. Yeah, maybe even 1 30. I got up, I smoked a cigarette, and I went and I laid back down, and then I wasn't tired, man. I was like, man, just get up. And I got up and I came back out into the living room and I watched a couple of episodes of uh, Halloween episodes. I watched the Family Matters Halloween episode, which I didn't really care too much for, but they got another one that I want to watch. But um, who remembers the Halloween episode? Damn, Matt Nolan, thank you so very much, man. Says, hey, buddy, congrats on everything. You still never got back at me on February on Messenger, but do so. Hey, I thought I looked you up, Matt Nolan. You... <clears throat> Okay, I thought I, I thought I typed in Matt Nolan, but I didn't see anything on uh Messenger. Hold on. Are you sure that you're messaging the right person? <laughs> I can't find you. 
I can't find it, bro. Send me another message or erase that message. I don't fucking know. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. I don't, I don't, and I don't even, I don't even get as many messages as I used to anymore. So it's not like they get buried or anything. Um, I'm going way down. I'm still in September though. <laughs> I'll have to take a look, man. I'm sorry about that, man. It's not like I it's not like I did that shit intentionally, dog, just to dish you. <laughs> um yeah, you know, so yeah, man. Appreciate that, man. That's some good money coming in right there, man. hundred dollars for the night, man. That's awesome, bro. That's almost what I make at work. And that doesn't go unnoticed, man. Like it it, it really doesn't, man. It means a lot to me. And um, like I said, I'm going to do the right thing with it. Ain't going to drink with it. It's going to try to buy me a turkey or something. We're not sure what we're doing for Thanksgiving, but that's where this goes towards. So anyway, oh yeah, Bald Nick says it's lit in that Family Matters Halloween episode. Oh, uh, with the dummy. Yeah, that's the one I'm going to watch next. The That's the one I'm going to watch next, Evil Urkel. The one I watched this morning, though, at like two o'clock in the morning is the one where, uh, Laura and Urkel got held up at the uh, at the bank by the gunman, and then and then Urkel felt like uh, Urkel felt like a, a a weaker man. He didn't feel like a big man because uh, because he didn't save the day. That Carl was the one that came in and saved the day. And bro, I'm gonna tell you what, like I literally got some tears in my eyes as I watched that. See, that's what I fucking love about these earlier '90 episodes and shit. You know what I'm saying, like. <clears throat> the heartfelt emotion that comes with it. Family Matters, uh, uh, um, Fresh Prince, fucking Roseanne. Roseanne didn't always drive the uh, the fields home quite like the rest of them. But, man, dude, like, that was my shit, bro. And I love it, dude. And HBO has it. You know, they have the Family Matters. They have the, uh, uh, um, what was the other one that I just said? Uh, uh. Fuck, I just lost it. Family Matters, and uh, I want keep wanting to say Home Improvement, but they don't have Home Improvement. That's the one I want to watch. Anyways, the other one. The other one. Also, they've got fucking uh, Looney Tunes. Mom used to really love watching Looney Tunes. They tried watching them the other day, but it just, just wasn't the same. I, I don't really like the voices and like the the uh, classical theatrical music any you know anymore, man. Kind of gets, gets it going. But, um, Dan Rob Smith, oh man, opening a can of beans says, what do you think of the new Halloween film? I have mixed emotions about the new Halloween kills. Um, I think that the kills on Halloween kills were excellent. I really enjoyed it. I even really enjoyed the story and, uh, leading up until they were up in the hospital. I kind of like how they were bringing back different um, aspects of part, like part one, you know, with the, the nurse that survived the first encounter. And then he brought it, you know, and she was the same thing was happening with him climbing on the roof and shit. Tommy Doyle, you know, but once they came up with the whole mob thing, we got to fight him. We got to kill that bastard, you know, and then they had everybody at the hospital, which it had zero consequence on the fucking movie whatsoever. You know, the crazy, stupid mob that, that rushed into the hospital and forced the old the old man to kill himself. Spoiler alerts, guys. I didn't. I I liked it, but I didn't. I loved Little John and Big John. <laughs> I got a knife. I got a knife. Little John and Big John. That was like the best. I don't know why I really love that part. Um, it was a mixed bag. It was a mixed bag for me, quite honestly. I said I I, I liked the kills and I liked the movie all the way up until uh till they got to the hospital and then the whole mob mentality thing, you know. And you know, I don't I don't know what kind of point they were trying to prove there. I didn't like the ending of it. Um, I won't say what happens for anybody that hasn't seen it yet. Um, I give it a seven out of ten. Maybe a six. It might be my second least favorite. I haven't I haven't seen um I haven't seen part three yet, but I just know that it's gonna be my least favorite. 
So, like I said, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not trashing on it too hard. Like I say, I'm a little sad by my, by my synopsis because, guys, I am a diehard Michael Myers fan. Like, uh, Halloween is my number one. You know, you know, Halloween, Jason, or maybe Halloween, Chucky, Jason, Freddy. You know what I mean? That's probably how, how the order goes for me. And, uh, and uh yeah you know i was i was going in with uh hopes high you know and it just didn't just didn't you know didn't do it for me so yeah i'm looking forward to uh 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 the new chucky i am looking forward to the new chucky series i'm interested in seeing how they'll uh they'll evolve charles lee ray's character um you know through a series format as opposed to uh you know, story arcs, you know, and um, movie segment, you know, like you can do a lot with the character, you know, through a series, you know, through um, a set of installments as as opposed to, you know, full length features, as it were, you know, Brandy Renee says, oh, my God, Charlie, the new Chucky series is good. Looking forward to the second episode on Tuesday. I'm looking for it right now. I'm, uh, I think that's on Hulu. I downloaded the sci-fi app. Yeah, I downloaded I downloaded the sci-fi app right there so I can watch uh I I didn't, I didn't know if it was coming out on um Hulu or what, but I'm really I'm really interested in seeing it. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad to hear a good review on it. So Yeah, have a great night Brandy Renee, Angry Junior, William Gabriel. Black Young Nika Merck. Satender Cower says you look drunk. Whatever. Do I sound drunk? Do I am I acting drunk? Come on, you guys know me when I'm drunk. It's okay. Like I said, there will always be uh deflectors and like I can't I'll, I'll never win over everybody even whenever i was on my top you know back when i had a hundred and something thousand subscribers you know there was still there were still haters you know it's gonna be that's just what it's gonna be but uh but hey you know like the, my great the greatest slap in the face to all these haters you know is this life that i'm living well you know is me uh showing up every day sober and uh strong and confident you know like I say, you know what? Uh, Bridget is the family drunk now. It's not even me anymore. It's Bridget. She's the one that uh, that gets drunk uh, and shows her ass on video, whether it's uh, staged or not, you know, whatever, you know, it's to be determined. You know, Michael has her portrayed as the alcoholic, you know, so whatever. <sighs> William Gabriel says Charlie looks tired. He's hitting the sack at hey, Arab man. Sometimes even sooner than eight, man. I'll go to bed sometimes at seven thirty, man. I will go to bed at seven thirty, man. Uh Jordan Yard, have a great night, man. Cameron Fullerton and Gildas. Have a great night. Miss Cody Wample, have a great night. Bye. So yeah, that wasn't a fart. Hear that? Hold on. Hold on. Damn it. Who oh, heard it? Hold on. That wasn't a fart. I need to get me a new chair. I'm thinking about getting me a new gamer chair. Adam Ritter, have a great night. I got to get my damn Jeep fixed first, though. I still it won't go in reverse. It went in reverse today. I was I put it, I put it in for. I, I, I popped in the clutch, I put it in first, and then I quickly jammed it back down in the reverse, and it went into gear, and it backed up, but it only did it one time. So I got to get my transmission fluid changed. I can change it myself, but I need like a very special Allen adapter that, you know, it's a shallow, modified uh yep so i can change my transmission fluid to see if that's what's wrong with the jeep 
Franco Avila. No, he did not. Says your stepdad played you. How did my stepdad play me if he gave me a fucking Jeep? Shut up. <laughs> Seriously. <clears throat> Mary's Place. Have a great night. Serendipitous Sarah. Thank you so much. Says, what is your favorite scary movie? Show you right quick. Boom. This is probably my favorite scary movie right now. Brain Scan. Has anybody seen Brain Scan? Edward Furlong and Frank uh, Langella. An interactive trip, road trip through hell. Take a look. Yeah. Edward Furlong, yo. I don't know if y'all have uh sorry, Avila. I wasn't trying to be rude. This is uh from what year is this? 1994. When Michael, uh Nick O, thank you so very much, man. Uh happy birthday, Angry Grandpa. Bye, Charlie. Have a great night. I'm about to get off of here. I'm trying. Says when Michael, a lonely teenager, orders the latest interactive video game, the new high tech wizardry, wizardry penetrates his subconscious, where his dark impulses lead him through a deadly maze of murder, deception, and desire. Preserved, pursued by a homicide detective and prodded by the trickster material, uh, who materializes into his room, Michael is torn between the worlds of good and evil, of reality and fantasy, and ultimately life and death. How's that sound? Essentially a killer video game. So, um, I really like it a lot. It, it holds uh, 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 an extreme amount of uh, uh, nostalgia factor for me. And, um, uh, yeah. Yeah, man. That's where it is right now. I've got another one right here. Also, put this Put this all back here. I've been using these movies to kind of uh, prop my shit up. <laughs> prop up my, my webcam. And boom. The People Under the Stairs. Now this is, uh, this one right here is streaming on Peacock right now. So you can watch it in much better quality. Uh, this is a Wes Craven uh it's got the young kid from uh, uh, Mighty Ducks in it. Remember him? It's got Bing Rames in it. Except he doesn't get banged by a gimp in this one. There's somebody wearing a gimp suit in this, but they don't bang Bing Rames in it. 6'8 Chavez says, love that one. I do too. This one right here holds so much fucking damn nostalgia. Franco Avila, don't worry about it, bro. You're good, man. I didn't mean to be so mad. Just sometimes, like, Erica's stepdad is, he's crazy, man. He'll, he'll be like, man, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> like, what the fuck do you mean I played you? I ain't played you. I'm like, yeah, I know, Joby. I got it square. Wes Craven, the director of The Serpent and the Rainbow, and Shocker, which I've got Shocker, too. I love that as well. Says, locks you inside the most terrifying house on the street. Trapped inside a fortified home owned by a mysterious couple, a young boy is suddenly thrust into a nightmare. The boy quickly learns the true nature of the house's homicidal inhabitants and the secret creatures hidden deep within the house. Stunning visuals highlight the, this inventive film that the San Francisco Chronicle calls Wes Craven's most satisfying movie. Uh, what's the original date? I'm seeing a date of 2002 on here, and I'm not so sure that that is accurate. Two thousand and three, but I actually think this movie was actually made in like nineteen ninety five because I got a funny story with this. Uh, I got a funny, funny story with this one right here, man. I used to use this I used to use this uh, this VHS as a whack off material <laughs> there was some there was some 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 erotic scenes in here that i kind of liked as a kid 
And, you know, back in the day, we didn't have porno. We didn't have internet to get porn and shit. The best that you can do really was like old wadded up freaking paper pages ripped out of cherry or something like that, you know, that are half torn together and shit. So, oh man, yeah, you know, full sister, 6'8", six, 6'8", eight, six, eight Chavez, talking about full sister, the uh, uh, um, Ruby. <laughs> Ruby, 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 Ruby. Oh man, and I know that my mom knew what was going on too, like, cause like I wasn't very discreet about it as a kid. I just had to get it out. I'm sorry, guys. That's <laughs> man. I had a thing for Ruby though. I ain't even gonna lie with you, man. I'd have gone up in. I'd have gone up in the house with the people under the stairs that tried to get the money for Ruby's mama's operation. I swear to God, I would have. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So anyways, man, I'm going to go ahead and get off of here, man. I love you all. Thank you all for watching, man. 6'8", Chavez, Browns boy. Baldwin, Young Nicka, Dan Rob Smith, uh, Jacob T, Boy Scoob, uh, Franco Avila, Bri Brianne Anderson, Jordan Last, Kevin Zerfus. Much love to you, Kevin. Hopefully you're having a great one, man. Hope hopefully your mom's doing well. Rebecca Swillen, Angry Junior, Ash Blake, all y'all, man. Thank y'all so much for watching. I'm getting tired. I'm done. Done. I'm gonna go throw this cake away now. I bet Erica. I made some homemade meatball subs. I bet Erica didn't eat one. That's all right. That's what I'm having for for dinner tomorrow, too. Oh, man. Oh, this is it. Did I do good? I didn't, like I said, I didn't talk as good as I thought I would. I got a little more bothered than I thought I was going to get. But uh, overall, whatever. I think, I, you know, we had a good time, right? Franco Avila says, shout out to the meatball sub. Shout out to the meatball sub. I don't think Erica ate any, so I'm going to go eat hers. I made some homemade subs. And I made it without parsley and basil. I used a little bit of garlic salt and stuff like that. But I didn't use any of the Italian uh, flakes in it because Erica said she didn't like Italian flakes. No, I'm kidding. I better, I'm going to get myself in trouble. They taste good. They really do taste good, though. Anyway, Serendipitous Sarah, thank you so much for the donations. Have a great night. Jen Cam, much love to you. Hopefully you've been enjoying that cold breeze. I'm about to go step outside in the cold breeze right now. Smoke me a cigarette and then go to bed. Mm-hmm. Gamer guy. Brandy Renee Dunyas. Ha <laughs> ha says I go eat hers. Yeah, I'm gonna tear, I'm gonna tear her stuff up. Rich Franco Avila. D beats. Thank you so much for the donation, man. That was quite generous of you, man. And like I say, I won't squander it. Gamer guy, much love to you, man. Oh, you guys, I got to get off of here, man. Thank y'all for watching, for loving dad, for loving the family. Who knows where we'll be in the next five years, but I promise you that I'm going to continue to live every day. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, like dad's watching, you know, like I know that it's going to, you know, affect my tomorrow, you know, so always positive decisions, um, wise choices, um, and all that, all that good shit, I guess. <laughs> so, man, thank y'all for watching, being so supportive, and uh, catch y'all next time. Peace. Ooh, wedding crashers. Ah, oh, dog, yeah. <laughs> I definitely won't forget to do that, buddy. Uh-uh. <laughs>